considered what they call a special inspector. How much do they pay? It ranges, it varies, depending on your experience, being an apprentice all the way up to a journeyman, ranging from apprentices that are just a little over $30 an hour to uh, operators getting over $60 an hour. 60, 6 zero. 6 zero. Oh, nice. Watching people shovel. <laughs> I recommend it to anybody because right now there's a shortage. There's zero people waiting on the out-of-work list for jobs right now. They have no, no available people. So we're short inspectors, we're short operators. All right, Jesse, so what are you guys doing here? Mixing exactly. asphalt. Mixing asphalt. Yeah. Or are you like a supervisor? Inspector. Inspector. I check the compaction of the asphalt. And do you need a license for that? Yes. But what type of license? It's, an, uh, it's called an international council, a code council license. And it requires you to have uh, a license to carry a nuclear gauge like this one right here. That allows you to take compaction testing with asphalt and soil. How do you get that license? Do you need to go to school? Or you... I went to school through operating engineers at uh, Local 12 here in, in Whittier. So you guys are union? Yes. Which union is it? Local 12. Oh, Local operating 12. Operating engineers. How much do they pay? It ranges. It varies depending on your experience. Being an apprentice all the way up to a journeyman, ranging from, I'm sure, uh, apprentices that are just a little over $30 an hour to uh, operators getting over $60. 60, 6 zero. 6 zero. And you guys get overtime as well? Yeah, anything over 8 hours is overtime. Anything uh, on Saturdays is overtime. Anything over uh, 12 hours is double time. Like how many hours do you average per week? 40 plus. Do you enjoy what you do? Yes. Yeah. Would you recommend it to other people? Absolutely. I was an operator for many years prior to becoming an inspector. This is... Uh, just the next best thing in, in my industry as far as staying in construction when you're uh, tired of shoveling and move on to the next best thing which is watching people shovel <laughs> exactly and getting paid more for it right I uh, yeah yeah I would say you're getting paid more uh, along the lines all right relatively more. Um, do you have anything else you want to share about the job or anything in general I recommend it to anybody because right now there's a shortage. There's zero people waiting on the out of work list for jobs right now. They have no no available people. Oh. So we're short inspectors, we're short operators. They're constantly testing and, and, and bringing new people in the apprenticeship program. But uh, I recommend inspection to anybody that's in the construction industry, period. What are the steps to get to an inspect an inspector? Do you have to start there? Or can you go straight it's, into it? Uh, you can go straight to inspection. It doesn't require you to start with a shovel first. Uh, you just have to go through the schooling process and uh, get a position in that they allow you to learn your way up and or become an apprentice in Local 12 to uh, go up gradually that way. They teach you how to uh, pass the exams. Passing the exams is up to you, but uh, they teach you how, they, uh, how the exams work and uh, the best study practices to get past the test. Got it. After you get the license, they teach you how to become an inspector. Quickly, you can learn something yeah. when you have to. I got into inspection, or not inspection, but construction, operating heavy equipment, but it wasn't my uh, first choice. You know, it was an accident. I fell into it, made it a career, made a career out of it, and was able to take care of my young family. I was a young dad, 20 years old. Married at 21, you know, trying to figure out life. Construction put my daughter through private school and college and took care of my family. So, of course, I recommend it to any young person that uh, maybe college is not them. Trade schools like operating heavy equipment, welding, plumbing, electrical. Yeah. It's all in need. We don't teach it in school no more. When I was in school, we had metal shop. We had auto shop. I build race cars for fun. I only do this because it allows me to afford my hobby, which is drag racing. It's a good living, but I recommend it to anybody. It's better than an office life, that's for sure. The stigma is, you know, you look down on people that are working hard because they didn't go to college. The problem is, I make more than most people do that go to college. They probably don't make nearly what I make probably for the next 
by 10 years and they're usually in their path if their path gets to $60 an hour my uh, licenses allow me to continue to grow in income the licenses I carry the more money you can make I should say more opportunities for more money you can make it's not uh, above anybody to create their own inspection company and go off on their own for me the benefits for medical are more important uh, for my wife so I can't necessarily go down that road of starting my own company I probably could it's a gamble on my part if I was gambling on me it'd be one thing but I'm gambling on my family which is another so I don't do that I would rather take a position as an employee so that my family's well-being is secure I don't have to worry about medical or any of those things because it's all taken care of medical benefits are good better than most not as good as they should be we make content for drag racing and our little car crew you know we have it's neat it's just fun it's surprising how many views some of our videos have gotten the channel name infamous racing established 1994 facebook and instagram I recommend it to anybody all the time. My, um, my son-in-law is in the, in the service. Uh, when he gets out of the service, I'm going to train him to become an inspector. Only because I don't want him going into a field where he's going to break his back like I did. Being an inspector, I can do this in my 80s. And your licenses dictate everything. So granted, as a youngster, you're going to get experience from the ground up. You don't have to start as a shovel or person. You can get your licenses just like I did. Anybody can do the same path I did, study and go take exams. Job description would be a special inspector. I'm considered what they call a special inspector, a deputy inspector. If you look it up online, it's considered a special inspection. The stuff that I do is commercial inspection, not residential. So it's heavy, heavy, heavy work, road work, bridge, big construction, multi-story you know, buildings. We did construction on Wilshire Grand Hotel. That at the time was the largest, world's largest continuous concrete placement. At one time, their footing uh, hold 27,000 cubic yards of concrete, placed all one time continuously without stopping. So, as far as the engineering side of things, uh, going from an operator to what I do, I have to deal with engineers. I talk to engineers. I am their eyes and ears in the field. I have to relay what I see in the field to engineers and people who are going to read my reports based on contract document materials. Everything that they place has to be approved. So the contractors, all these guys, materials, all have to be approved. And that's kind of like part of my job is I come through and make sure that the material being placed is accurate, the compaction of the material is correct based on the specs and uh, usually the city standards depending on where you're at. So you work for the city? No. Oh. I'm a third party inspector. Be the city inspector. This guy represents the owner. I represent the contractor. So there's inspection to everything. So these guys wouldn't be in the union, but I, I'm on the union side. These guys are non-union, working more as a consultant. Their specialty is inspection, but they're not actually doing inspection. They're oversight. I do the actual inspection. Stories like I work for a lab with a considered third party inspection agency. The contractors would hire our lab to come out and oversee work, or owners would hire our lab to be the oversight for construction. So there's a lot of avenues to this game, and it's not as a black and white, shovel, dirt. There's a lot more, I would say, physics. For me, physics, math, engineering, geology. But you have to know a lot of shit, and over time, it doesn't come overnight. How long did it take you to get here? I've been, I've been in this industry for 35 plus years. Uh, I'm only 47 since, since I was 15. Okay. My uncle was a contractor. Worked for him in the summers. It's kind of like in my in my family. They all work construction. None of our like one of our family members actually went to college, got a degree. Not many people in my family on my mom's side did the college thing. Everybody was hands on. Whether they were mechanics, carpenters, uh, plasters, first generation operating engineer as far as equipment operator, inspector slash. I've done, I've done almost everything in the industry. A little bit of everything. I'm not an expert in anything. And so I've had my hand a little bit in everything. And you got a great story. Thank you for sharing it. Absolutely. I appreciate you so Absolutely. much. That was great information. Wow. You know, they see, I mean, that you can make 60 bucks an hour doing what I do. And I don't know anybody that uh, just right out of junk you know you can get the same licenses I care it's not like I had to go through hoops to get them I just had to pass the exam
How long would that take somebody? I took five tests in 18 months. Thank you so much. Thank you for your time, Jesse. I appreciate you. No problem.